What's going on guys? So for today's video, which might actually happen more frequently because I might actually have fun here. I have a guest, Hayden Ralph on, who's been a longtime friend in the agency space for what, four years? Yep. Four yep. years. Since so like this is 2018. No newcomer stuff, um, a lot of experience. So we're just going to talk SMMA agency game um, and really just see where the discussion goes. Um, Hayden, what uh, what's your agency? What's your niche? Just real quick so everyone gets a quick. Yeah, really quick. Nice to meet everyone. Um, jumping on Stevie's YouTube channel here. Just created one as well. Now I've known Stevie for a long time, like you talked about. Um, my agency, it's called Jump forward media uh we specialize in medical spas and body contouring and uh yeah a little bit about us is we have a full done for you system and we help our clients obviously get more booked employments but primarily we're you know a coaching educational company as well so there's a lot more to it than just uh booking appointments booking leads generating leads um so all that stuff we're going to get into today but yeah it's a little bit of background on me and obviously you guys know a little bit about stevie if you don't Maybe I'm going to post this on my channel. So Stevie, talk a little bit about yourself, Digilox, and uh, maybe some yeah. of those awards behind you, huh? <laughs> yeah, so uh, I run Digilox. I started it probably a little over five years ago in my apartment from my underwear with a laptop. Uh, I came across a Ty Lopez ad a long time ago when I was making juices and smoothies. Uh, had no money, was pissed off. Uh, figured that I could figure this SMMA thing out. Obviously I did, but we're in the medical space. We're in the high ticket Cairo space. Um, we're basically a full service agency. Um, shit. I mean, we've come a long way. We were number 380 fastest growing companies on the Inc. 5000 in 2022. 95% of our growth has come from word of mouth and referrals. We're just starting to pour into paid ads uh, at the beginning of this year because obviously we got some uh, big goals that we can talk about, but overall, um, yeah, the journey has been uh, quite intense, very difficult, but life's good. So good, man. Well, we have a couple of topics that we want to talk about today and that, you know, a lot of people are talking about. And so one of the biggest ones that I wanted to first start off with and ask you, Stevie, is like, what's been the biggest lessons of 2022? Like, I know you made yeah. the Inc. 5000, which is incredible. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, like, huge difference there in terms of just the the ClickFunnels plaque that everyone has. Like, Inc. 5000 is really the, the real deal. So yeah. talk a little bit about your biggest lessons of 2022 and, mm -hmm. and more on that. Yeah, so great topic. So 2022, obviously, we're, what, it's January 14th. Obviously, 2023 is already brewing we're ready to go but for 2022 what i realized um especially as a team um the biggest lessons i learned is at our scale of an agency when we're north of 150 going towards 200 clients is two levers the two levers that are most important for our entire company to pour into was one increasing value to increase price point and also to lower churn um, as much as possible, which is basically retention. So when you get to the level where you have, let's just say um, 150 clients, a 5% churn on that is a decent size amount of clients leaving out the back door every single month. And so your inflow and your product, your efficiency on the front end in terms of acquisition needs to be very effective. However, what we've realized is it's easier to plateau in the multi seven figure arena if you don't increase your price or you don't lower churn. Because if you put all this energy on bringing in new clients, but you're not really putting a ton of energy in reducing churn or increasing your price, you kind of get in this hamster wheel type environment and we haven't got there yet i mean we've i mean in 2022 we literally grew 120 percent um and i'm talking uh net profit so this is our fifth year in a row growing over 100 percent yep um just feeling the 
landscape of things and and how things are going to look like in 2023 and beyond, which is what we typically do as we forecast, is we realize how can we get our price average price point to 3,500 retainer? How can we reduce churn, which in 2022, we had a 5.3% return churn. How can we get it to a 4%, which is massive. So in 2023, which kind of rolls into the biggest lessons of 2022 is we're uh, striving to bring churn down even lower. So from a 5.3 to a four and we're adding some strategic chess moves in 2023 to get our average price point from it's about 3,100 right now to north of 3,500, which makes our need to have more client. It lowers the amount of clients we need to get to 10 million a year. And uh, that's kind of like the game we're playing right now. Love that. And I want to talk more on the topic of churn um, mm -hmm. and let's dumb it down a little bit just in case. You know, some people are a little less aware if they're just getting started in the game. It's all about retention, right? And retention means retaining your clients. Now, I, I feel like your agency is extremely good at it. One, because you provide really good results, but go into a little more about like what increases retention. You know, it is a relationship game. You have to have good relationships. Communication has to be there. So talk about, you know, how your company has been able to implement those things to yeah. increase retention. Yeah, so retention is one hell of a strategy. Um, I think, to be honest, um, the entire organization needs to be pretty much focused on churn other than like maybe a few individuals who are on the front end bringing in new clients, but churn is everything. And what we've realized is retention is broken up into two things. So it's results, which is basically understanding what KPIs are you judged on? What are you being hired on? What are you being fired on? You need to understand that. So like for our agency, we're judged on appointments to the door and revenue. We're hired on our ability to bring appointments to the door and revenue. And we're also fired on our inability to bring appointments to the door and revenue. So the first part, the foundation of retention of the entire agency, to be honest, is results. And the KPIs that your clients give a fuck about. The second part, which is almost just as important right up there, I'd give it 48%, results 52%, is the experience your clients get working with your agency. That relationship building, trust, the knowledge gain that they're getting from working with you guys. Them knowing that you actually give a shit. Like, you know, yeah. you, you can tell yeah. we're not stupid. You know, you actually give a shit. You're always striving for the best experience. You have really good, effective communication. You're fast in terms of making strategy changes, implementations, and you're always trying to upgrade their IQ by working through you. So yeah. it's results and experience. It's just that simple. Those are yeah. the two levels. How I like how I like to think about our agency and how I structure it. And when I do my um, success call, if you will, is I strategically try to put a mindset into the client. Like, Hey, this is the point where you can, you can go back. Like, right. We don't have to move forward at this point. We haven't launched anything. I want to make sure that you're a good fit. And so for that reason, we're going through all these different things in our program and what you need to do on your end to be successful. We have these coaching programs. We have these sales training courses, all these different things. We're going to get you the appointments through the door, but it, at the end of the day, it's up to you. And we're going to put everything in front of you. But if you just sit back and wait for appointments and think that, you know, you're just going to magically sell people without any prior knowledge or that you can't train your team on this as well, um, then you're going to lose out on a whole bunch of what our program has to offer because number one, we're not an agency. We're your growth partner, right? I want to make sure that you get the best possible results. And that's exactly what you're talking about. Um, and that really does come down to communication. Like people can tell in an instant, I've had some bad account managers. I'm sure you've had bad account managers uh, and they can ruin some pretty big relationships if they're not handled correctly. So for example, an ad's tanking, it's going down the drain. Like, what do you do? Do you go to the client and say, Hey, you know, uh, I don't really know what's happening. Um, I'll get with the team and come back to you with a solution. 
No, what you want to do is be quick on your feet. And before that call even starts, you know, everything that's going on with that client's accounts and you have a solution to present them. Hey, I'm being open and transparent. I see that these results aren't the best. We already have an ad going that we just need to turn on. That's this offer. I highly recommend it. 20 other clients are using it, getting really good results. I know it's going to work for you. Let's implement that and be quick on our feet. Right. Yeah. That's savage. Like, yeah. Listen to what Hayden just said. So literally the account management position is identifying and obviously by tracking data, understanding where your clients are at and addressing potential issues before they become big issues, before they contact you regarding the issue. That's the last thing you want. That means you're not proactive and that you don't really give a fuck or your systems, processes, checks and balances are terrible. And so you need to be coming direct business to business, growth partner to growth partner. This is exactly what's happening, right? This is exactly what we're going to do next step. And you can even have your next game plan after that. So if this doesn't work in the next 10 days, we're immediately going here, such as we're doing a uh, we're doing a niche swap or we're doing a complete offer swap or we're completely changing the landscape, changing a variable to get it back to where it needs to go. But it's proactive, effective strategy that they're hiring you for. And so yeah. it's a huge part of um so Stevie, imagine if imagine if this, imagine if you hired me to get you more appointments for your agency. So agency selling, right? And so I'm saying, you know, on average, we bring like 10 to 20 demos for you. And uh, we meet every two weeks. Does that sound good? He's like, yeah, cool. We meet two weeks later and there's no booked appointments, right? We hop on the call. I'm like, hey, Stevie, how you doing? How's everything going? He's gonna be like, well, fucking bad. Like you haven't brought me anything. Whereas if I would have gone to him in the first couple of days and been like, hey, Stevie, what I'm noticing is this campaign, it really isn't, you know, starting off the way I want it to. I think there could be a couple of things going on with like the industry. I think we pull the money back. I'm going to give you a refund and I'm going to wait till I know a really good, you know, time to get in the market. Right. And just like that, I gave him his money back. And this is, this is something a little more strategic, but like, just think about this. He's trusting me now because I'm like, Hey, right now isn't the best time. This isn't working. I'm going to give you your money back. And I know that two weeks from now, the market's really going to hit because X, Y, and Z is coming up. Let's attack it full circle then. Now, it's a little higher level strategy, but it makes sense. So that, this is an important part where I want to factor in what retention is. So retention is results and experience. And so since all, it's, it's almost a 50-50 important level, in a case where, for example, there was a 20 demo expectation and there was zero, and you show up on the call with zero communication prior hand, knowing that there's zero, that experience is shitty. That's like the ter terrible experience for the client because what if the previous week, the client is just scratching his head saying like, man, like where are these demos are like, honey, should I like uh, partners, whatever, should I reach out to him? Should I wait? Is he going to reach out to me? So now his experience, not only not getting results, but his experience and his interpretation of you as someone, as a consultant, is becoming annoying. He does. He's starting to build resentment. Whereas, let's just say there was zero fucking results. But on day four, Hayden was so proactive, letting him know X, Y, and Z is what we're doing here. This is what we're doing here. So he knows the results aren't there, but this agency is so proactive and cares so much and is going so much the distance that I trust them that they're going to figure it out. And so instead of doing a refund, Hayden, which we would never do, we're yeah. more into like, look, and we say this all the time, like if we can't do it, no one can do it. So right now, this is your market. This is the this is what's going on. We are going to figure this out. And at the end of the day, we're going to be as transparent as possible. We're going to have the best sort of strategy to put forth for your towards your clinic. And our type of clientele appreciates that more than anything, because at the end of the day, where they're going to go. And that leads to step zero before retention is bringing on the right client for your agency. So yeah. we success call. Do you guys have a success call or like a type of onboarding call where you walk them through 
like expectations of your entire program? Yeah. So we go over, we're already going over um, expectations on the sales call, you know, yeah. we're going over goals, expectations on sales call. We go deep in that initial call and then on onboarding in that entire call, we then go over expectations and, and yeah, I guess the answer is yes. It's pretty in depth. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Cause just so if, if you're an agency and you want to, you know, have a quick way to increase retention on the front end, have an onboarding call, make sure you get all the information that is just back end, making sure that everything is set up properly. All information is given. Sometimes if you try to automate the process and you just try to get everything through a form, you're not going to get everything that the client wants to get across with their brand, with everything. So you might as well have an onboarding call 30 minutes to an hour to get all that information. And then I go a step farther is the next day, I actually hop on a success call with them and I walk them through a PowerPoint of all the expectations and give them an out. Say, hey, this is the client we want to work with. If you're not this, then we don't want to work with you. And that's just me being completely honest. But if you are serious, you do want to grow your business to multiple six and seven figures, then we're the agency for you because we've done it time and time again. And if that's not you, no worries. Like you only put down a $500 deposit to get started. We charge them on the day that they actually go live. So for that reason, I give them the out. And yeah. I feel like that builds transparency too. Cause it's like, listen, these are the people that we want to work with. If this isn't you, you know, let me know now. Cause sometimes the sales guys don't know. I know you do most of the um, sales calls yourself, Stevie, but if you have somebody else doing sales on your team, there's a lot that can get lost in translation. You know, people sometimes sell not a false dream, but they hype stuff up. Right. Yeah. So for that reason, that's, I think that's important, but I know we're going on to this topic a little, a little long. So do you want to, wrap up a couple uh couple things so let's summarize biggest lessons of 2022 in three points biggest lessons of 2022 for our agency where we were at was um focused by building even more value so that we can increase the price point which means we need an overall less number of clients to hit our next goal which is 10 million a year and churn uh churn also putting all the efforts in reducing churn through adding more value and increasing price point those that whole scenario there of improving the product to increase the price point and to also decrease churn is yep. far more important i think at all stages but especially when you start to scale to the higher number is far more important than hey what you know our facebook ads to get more clients and outbound emails and bringing all these clients because if you bring in a bunch of clients and your shit sucks and you lose clients, you're going to just plateau a lot earlier anyway. So, well, yeah, and people are going to talk shit, you know? Yeah. Your brand like, equity will get washed out over, yeah. over time. Yeah. 100%. So, okay. I love that. Biggest lessons of 2022. Give us uh, your start, your starting revenue for that, and then your, your finishing revenue um, from January to December. So, we, from January to December. So in 2022, I think we finished at like, what was it? 2.5, 2 something like that. 2.5 in uh, 2023, we ended with right around 4.5. Um, however, our profit margin and our net was super healthy. So we're basically right. our EBITDA for 2022 was a uh, $2.3 million EBITDA, so profit. Um, and it's continuing. It's a big focal point, you know, obviously in the agency space, revenue is revenue, but profit is profit. And at the end of the day, we're in this to make money. And so, um, yeah, we're continuing to scale and we're continuing to even be more uh, efficient on profit, which is super awesome. Yeah. So that goes into my next point. Let's talk about um, kind of the facade in the agency space about being a seven figure agency, being a six figure agency owner. Yeah. Like you could have five clients, 2K a month, right? And that 2K a month includes ad spend. So you're really not even yeah. at, at, you know, yeah. you're really not a six figure agency at that point because 
nobody talks about profit in this industry. I think yep. it's kind of something people are scared of. You're one of the biggest lessons that I learned with that because I came to you a bunch of times uh, last year and the years prior and be like, dude, I'm so pumped. This is how much we're making. And you're like, yeah, but that includes ad spend. So you're really not making that much. And I was like, no. shit, you know, you're right. Yeah. Um. So this is important because obviously there's a lot of like, uh, it's just not, I think the, the important part here is a lot of people are, it's like an ego thing where they want to be this, this, and this, or they're trying to like, you know, I don't know. It, it might be an ego thing, whatever. But I think the problem with it is at the end of the day, you know how much time you're putting into this and you know how much money you have and you know how much money you're making and you know what you're trying to do with your life. And so yeah. you can't fake that part. And so I think it's super important for anyone listening to this call, never put ad spend into any of your numbers. It's like, just don't do it because it's not, it's delusional. It's very delusional. It is. Yeah. You know, a hundred K a month agency, but 50 K of that is um, inclined ad spend. That doesn't even make sense. Like if private equity or any sort of uh, acquisition was looking at you to buy you, they're, they're looking at what you're actually really doing. What's, what's your real, in, what's your real revenue? What's your real income? Yep. You know, it's not, so I don't know. I don't Huge know point. I, I love that. I think you addressed it perfectly. Don't lie to yourself, right? Who are you lying to? You're lying to yourself. Correct. Now, another topic I want to come across, because I think, you know, obviously maybe I might be more involved than you in terms of looking at other people in the industry uh, in terms of like watching different people. What do you think about this Thomas Gannett kid who's just blowing up on YouTube? I know you've heard of him. Yeah. Um, tell me about your thoughts with him because he's super young kid. People seem to be jumping on board. Um, yeah. Which is interesting, right? Because he's so new to the game. So yeah, yeah. talk about it. So first off, um, I thought his videos were hilarious. Like I legit started laughing yeah <laughs> like legit i was like holy shit maybe he's super good at editing and he's good at like putting like the parody together like the comedy together i was fucking dying for a second i was like holy shit um another great fucking thing he's doing that i just realized is through his viralness and through his content he's exposing more people to what smma and agency is which yeah. is kind of like how I got in the game, like Ty Lopez in the beginning was like 10K a month agency, get 10 clients to 1K. He fucking blasted it. It hit me. I didn't know what the fuck that, you know, and, and I, and yeah, now yeah. Where I am now. So I think the benefits of Thomas Ghana is one, he's, it's funny. It's in, it's, uh, I thought it was funny content through his efforts or whatever he's doing. He's exposing more people to the agency model, which if you are a fucking G, and you stick to it, you can build a multi seven figure income, net profit, not revenue, net profit, right? I'm yeah. talking profit. Uh, it's possible through this. So he's exposing more people. However, I would take a lot of like the strategy material, just all with a grain of salt. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's, I don't know, doing 10 or $20,000 a month in his agency, which, um, you know, you it's good for his age. Yeah, it's good. For no, his yeah, age. he's also young yeah. as shit. He's young yeah. as shit. But I wouldn't. I would be very wary about um people coming into the space or in this space who are trying to build a real agency because they don't that he doesn't have a real agency. They don't have real agencies. Like real agency is um you know you understand the team aspect. You understand product market fit. You know you're you're well into the um. To me, I'd say at least seven figures. Before you're training anyone how to do shit, you should be at least in the multi seven figures. And I think at least netting near that seven figure amount net profit. Um, so just take everything with a grain of salt. Um, he has a long journey ahead of him. <laughs> that's all I got to say. Um, yeah, I think what he's doing that's super smart is I feel like he's probably making more with go high level affiliate than he probably is with his agency. Um, based off that, I think he's a really smart, smart kid for that. Yeah. I mean, just 
the amount the amount that you can make off YouTube too, once you have the affiliates and like being transparent, um, mm -hmm. is probably a lot. So yeah, I think that's a cool piece. Now talk about maybe some of the other YouTubers that he is uh he's exposing, which I think is super funny too, part of his content. Mm -hmm. Um like literally just blasting people, which is yeah. hilarious. So I and, learned about a lot of them through his videos. Like I didn't, didn't really know who they were before. That hens kid, that kid is, has no idea what the hell he's talking about. Like he is, he just needs to like stop um, because you can just tell, like for me looking yeah. through the lens, I, I could see there's zero like real proof on, on what he does. Zero team zero company, zero value. Like it's just, yeah, I would uh, stick to actually building a real agency and, and get off YouTube for the other guys. Jaime or whatever. Um, who is this? Hype man? I, Jaime. I don't yeah. know who that is. One of the other guys. Um, <laughs> I, really, I, re I really don't know what, what agency he runs. You know, like I think when you take advice from people, for example, I run digital ops. You know, you yeah. can go on 5,000. You can see our name listed on the top 380. We've had over 1,600% growth in the initial three years. And then we just hit another 132% growth off of yet last year. Yeah. Um, we have a real team. We have 28 employees. We offer 401k. We have health insurance. Um, we have an, an org chart. We provide real value. We literally, our returns in millions for our clients is is way up there aggregate so when you come into the game realize what do you want because if you want to build you want to make multi seven figures in income and you want to be that guy and you want to have that type of lifestyle you're going to need to build a real fucking company that has a real team real leadership you're going to need to know so many aspects of business it's not just how many clients can i get and da -da -da -da. like that's going to that's going to get you to like a small level and you'll get, you'll end up getting wiped out if you don't adapt. Yeah, exactly. There's so many levels to the business, right? You can get so caught up in these different things, client acquisition results, knowing your finances. That's so important. You can be burning through money with some software trials that you signed up for, which I've done plenty of times and look back and be like, fuck, I just save like $20,000 a year by canceling all this shit that I had no idea about. Right. And so just so many different aspects. And when you grow bigger, like Stevie is, you create leverage. And when you have leverage, now you can trade time for money, hire badass people and yeah. people that are better you better than you at certain things. Like, for example, Stevie knows business a lot better than I do. However, I feel like I'm better than him on the back end in terms of softwares. That's just kind of my thing is I'm more of an operations guy. So what I'm trying to take from Stevie is like being less of that and being more business focused. Cause I actually have a lot of fun doing the back end stuff and doing all these like little automation things. And that's, that's what I'm trying to learn from him. Cause his mindset, how he runs his business, how he looks at numbers, how he knows all the numbers that he has off the top of his head. Like, honestly, I don't even know most of the stuff that he's talking about um, in terms of for my business, like what's my overall growth? I know we've had growth since we started, but I don't know the numbers exactly. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a big learning process too. Like as you level up, your mindset changes and the people that you hire changes and you can start to really focus on the direction of your business. Just to give people context, what what was your revenue in 2020? 2022? Like revenue or just, like are you what, talking, not like, ad spend included, right? No, nah, that's been, what was rev? What was profit? What yeah. Was so I profited 200 K, which, <laughs> which was all right. And I would say yeah. the numbers get messy in terms of ad spend mixed in there. Cause we collect yeah. it together. So it's kind of hard to decipher. Mm -hmm. I'd say our biggest month was 80 K service fee. Um, and we've had, it was probably the whole time somewhere between 40 K service fee to the 80 K range different months going up and down, depending on different services yeah. um, that we we're trying to offer. A lot of times what we find is the problem in my industry, switching from body contouring to more med spa, we find out that our retention rate with med spas is a lot better. Number one, they have more money and the body contouring clients that just own, they're in like a salon, right? They have 
a room in a salon and they're banking on us for their entire business. So I kind of pride myself in that. It's really cool. I'm able to help small businesses, you know, grow. But the second we turn off marketing, they're done. Like they can't sustain because they don't know how to get new clients. And that's not necessarily a relationship that you want, right? You want to be with someone that has money for marketing that regardless if you have a bad month or not can come back to you because of the relationship that you, that you created. So those are my numbers uh, for this year. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's solid for everyone watching this. I mean, 200 K in, uh, in net profit is like, that's, that's legit income, you know? And, uh, and that's again, team of 10 that's after paying everyone. So net profit mm -hmm. that isn't, um, okay. I'm 26. That doesn't include the money you pay yourself every single month. So everyone on my team has a salary, right? I have a salary. So that's 200 K after yeah. everyone gets paid, softwares get paid, everything like that. I just wanted to clarify that in case people didn't, didn't know. Yeah. So you're paying tax on 200 K. Exactly. Yeah. And that's an important note, thing to understand is like, he's paying tax on 200 K. I'm paying tax on 1.9 million. That's my salary. I already have a salary in the company. That's $150,000 a year salary all the trips, all the things we do, all the things we add that have nothing to do with like the company are all add-ons that are your real EBITDA numbers, which is what PE in these, in these firms are looking at when you become a player in the space that they're looking to acquire. And kind of going on that note, I'm in the game of, of building a real asset that I can sell if I want to with a snap of a finger, right? Yeah. And when you change from like lifestyle, this like little SMMA game where you don't really know team and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff like that, you switch over here, you realize uh, you're building a goddamn asset. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I highly recommend everyone uh, go that route. You know, it's one, you're going to learn a lot more. And two, you're going to wish you did do that from the beginning because one day, if you want to sell it and it's easy to sell and you put it on the market, you can sell it in two to three months versus not being able to sell your agency. I think that's terrible. And that's just yeah. lack of preparation. And I have I have some advice for people. So how I got started and how I was able to sus sustain, even with bad months and good months, especially in the beginning, um, was having money to start off with. So... I know not everyone has that luxury, but I came in with 25K that I was like, this is staying in the business regardless. And not that it was necessarily needed because profit was already coming in in the beginning, but it was an assurance for me that I was like, no matter what happens, this 25K is staying in here for when times get rough because I'm not giving up, right? So that was part of my mindset all the time. I never really take money out of the business savings. Like- I just let that shit stack up because I know that X, Y, and Z agency is going down if they have a couple bad months in a row and I'm chilling because I can pay the team with my savings and we're going to keep moving forward. So I think resilience is huge, right? There's going to be times where you want to quit. I've wanted to quit like 50 oh, yeah. times. Um, clients hitting my phone up at like 5 a.m., like waking up to like 40 messages and you're just like, damn, is this shit worth it? But it is, you just... You just have to overcome certain things. Can't be a little bitch. And uh, that's, yeah. that's really it. Yeah, I think that's a big, big thing is like, this is uh, so many people get weeded out after the six month mark, the year mark, the two year mark. I think what I really value in an entrepreneur and anyone in the SMA community who's running an agency, bro, show me, show me three years of tax return growth, of significant growth over a three-year period, meaning you have gone through the cycles of shit that's been thrown at you within your niche and your industry, and you have had the character and the and the will how to develop systems to get around your problems, and you continue marching forward, and that shows way more about someone over a three to four-year, five-year period. And someone posting, hey, I did 100K a month or, hey, this year I did this, you know. And uh, that's kind of my challenge to actually Thomas Gannett is um, great kid, smart kid. 
uh, my advice to him, if he was ever asking for it, is, dude, fucking dial in on how are you going to keep that growth that you started now, which is absolutely incredible, or whether in the agency or whatever it is. But how are you gonna how how are you gonna maintain not only maintain double triple five x that over the next three years? So that's where the game's at. Cause we we don't want to just make some money right now, cause then you need money later. You got we got we got a long way to live, right? Yeah. We got a long way to live. And the way I see it is, shit, like really become financially free. Like that's the game. Let's let's get really financially free. Like let's make a lot yeah. of money. Not just like travel around the world with your laptop, like doing this and here and making six figure income. No, let's, let's really make some money. And that's kind of my thought process too. It's a long-term play. If you're in it for the short-term play, you're going to get, yeah, you're going to get ripped apart for sure. hundred percent. So going into, let's go into lifestyle a little bit. Cause we're already talking about that. Um, let's talk about the fake lifestyle that gets portrayed. It's not necessarily fake. Um, obviously you can have a lot of freedom when you own your own business, you can kind of schedule out your days, Yeah. but if you take advantage of that, you're going to feel it. Um, so talk about your experience with that and kind of, I know you're Stevie's like a real grinder, like every single day he's dialed in, he's working on himself. He's trying to become a better person. He's really in tune with his fitness, um, with his growth as an individual, but we've all gone through ebbs and flows in terms of. Mm -hmm. you know, wanting to have fun, getting burnt out, stuff like that. How do you, how do you handle the lifestyle? And before you go into that, talk about the lifestyle that's being portrayed. So be a little bit, I'm trying to like understand. Be a lifestyle more. that's portrayed online. Like you get an ad, it's like, Hey, I want to make $10,000 a month, have the freedom to go travel, whatever, you know, it's a sales pitch, but same yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there's two routes you can go. And this is kind of like what I was talking about earlier. You have to make a decision whether you're going to build a lifestyle business, which is kind of like that business where you can get away with traveling and doing this and you're making 50, 60, 70, 100K a month. Um, very lean team, X, Y, and Z. Uh, you can pull it off, but it gets to a point where when you get burnt out three, four years later and there's nowhere else to travel or whatever, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you have nothing, you have nothing to sell. Like your, your company is worthless. You might get maybe one times EBITDA, which is net profit, but you've basically, that, that's a problem. So what I see is, what I see is they're sacrificing the future of being set to do this thing now versus if you choose enterprise which is building a real asset and, and going that route you realize all that traveling and all that dance and show is like it's doable but you have to be strategic with it because it takes so much time learning infrastructure to build a real company so the way to get around it is let's just say nine months out of the year you're pretty damn in it you know you're you're solid 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 and then like a quarter out of the year, you're still super on it, but you still have that ability to like travel and enjoy yourself. But that whole like, I'm traveling here and I'm doing this. And it's like, does that guy even work? Well, he probably he does work, but it's like, he's just finessing his way to an income that is eventually going to die out. And, and at the end of the day, he's going to realize he never had an asset. And, um, I don't Which, know. If that's if that's what you want to do, that's a short term play. That's, short -term. that's what, yeah, short -term. that's what we're trying to to get to the point here. That's a short term play. If you're in it for the long haul, you know how I like to think about it. I read a book called The One Thing, a uh, really good book, and talks about obviously just like focusing on a couple big tasks a week and making sure to knock those out, and that's going to move the needle forward rather than stacking your plate with a bunch of little tasks that obviously need to get done, but that aren't the most important things. One of the big things that's talked about in that book is plan your work around your vacations, not the other way around. So like I'm sitting here January 14th, I'm going to plan something for May 1st. And if I do not hit my goal before then, I'm not taking the trip. And it's like, it's a week trip. 
I'm going to grind my ass off to try to hit that goal. If I don't hit that goal, then I'm not leaving for a week. Right. And you got to be honest and real with yourself. And you start planning like that. And you say, you know, I'm not doing anything besides this right now until that it's going to make that process so much more enjoyable. You're not going to feel like guilty. I know we've all felt guilty for doing certain things when you have a business. It's just kind of, it just happens. Like if you go out and drink with your friends, you're going to feel guilty because like the next day is shit. Right. Um, so I don't know if you, I think, vibe with that, Stevie. no, I think that's, I think that's a high level of discipline and, and, you know, that, that sort of structure and, and determination is, is absolutely amazing. I do also think like, once you you're at the level you're at and you have the agency and, and you have the team and you have all these things, you start to mature more because that lower level you, when you were first starting, seeing everyone travel and shit, that's probably very enticing. Cause you think like, Oh yeah, I can just do this and then travel. And once you realize you've built a right agency, you have a team, you're feeding families, you're, you're feeding clients, you're growing clients. The transition in mindset is like, shit, I, I not only want to preserve this, but I want to grow this thing. And like traveling and all this stuff is taking away from my ability to work on this thing. That's changing the game and, and bringing a lot of enjoyment and is also setting me up for the future. So there is that mental shift, and I think it comes through maturity of understanding, time, yeah. understanding what you the opportunity you actually have, and realizing that even five years from now you can change your entire your entire life, you know, and then you can exactly more. But um, yeah, yeah, man, love all that. So let's let's go over the last topic. So twenty twenty three, who's gonna get crushed? And who's going to be able to win and why? 2023, who's going to get crushed? Well, exactly what we just said. A lot said. of people are getting crushed anyways. 90% of 97, 98, I don't know. I'm just throwing out a number. They're already getting crushed. And they've been getting crushed. And a lot of them are becoming extinct and they're expiring. And the reason why is they don't understand the concept of product market fit understanding that like their ability to gain product market fit, which is like you having a legit demand for your services. And you understand that demand through client feedback, through your churn, through just organic word of mouth growth. Um, people who don't focus on that initial vehicle, which is the most important thing, are never going to last. And it's not a one-time thing. It's not like a one-time, we figured this out and it worked. Dude, in 2023, shit's changing. Like, And if you really want to be a beast, you got to be the person who's the one leading the pack. You're the one innovating. And then you realize six months later, everyone's copying you. It happens to us all the time. Like, yeah. We start and we've now taken the responsibility as the innovators, as the path movers in the road papers like we've already taken on that responsibility um yeah i guess the main message here is 2023 just like 2022 those who do not focus on the customer product market fit getting real feedback understanding how good their product is through specific kpis such as churn and just organic growth and word of mouth uh you're gonna get you're gonna get wiped out it's gonna be a stressful agency yeah, you're going to get work. Now, here's a funny metric that uh, I kind of realized we had a good product market fit. And as we're growing, there's still certain things that I'm manipulating to make sure it gets better. That's another thing. You can't ever be set on your product. You always have to be thinking about what can I do to make this better for the client? What do you guys want? Give them surveys, get feedback, hop on calls with them, make sure that they're good. Hey, what else could I help you with that you'd be stoked on? Right? Something like that. Now, one funny metric that's not even a it's not a numbers metric because it's a little hard to calculate is how many people have left and came back to your business because they couldn't afford it um something happened they didn't have money at the time they left yeah and then they came back to your business that's happened to me in the past couple months with like 10 clients they All left right. and they hit me back up like hey we want to come back on and be like oh well the price rose you know yeah. <laughs> love it so, that's a so, good 
So that in itself is a feedback mechanism that one, there is product market fit. Two, they probably went to a lower alternative, cheaper alternative, tried another thing, saw this flashy thing over here and they realized so many people suck. It's all marketing hook and flash on the front end. And then they have no, like their ability to uh, retain them is, is nil. So then they come crawling back in. Can we come back, Hayden? That's the main thing that happens to us is it's called indifference. Mm. They're with you. And then they see some other flashy thing, whether through Facebook ads or whatever. Yep. And they don't really understand that like, all that is just one hell of a marketing hook just to get more appointments and there's no back end delivery. It's like, and then they go through that and that's a great experience for them as a business owner, realizing like, Oh, that's not really what it is. And they come crawling back. Uh, super awesome win. You should always celebrate all that throughout the team too, realizing like they're coming. Yeah, we back. had some, we had some like gifts going around on Slack that were like, Oh, she'll yeah. be back whenever somebody gets offboarded there's always this like meme that gets thrown around that's like yeah. she'll be back because it's happened so many times it's like and that's it, the it mindset was... that's the mindset and confidence you want like you want to truly truly think and believe like yeah like they're coming back for sure because no no one else is going to help like you know no one else can be able to deliver at the level we deliver so they're they're coming back you know yeah and yeah, I just I just love that that little that little metric that's a little harder to define, but I think it's I think it's awesome. Yeah. I think you know you're on the right you know you're on the right path um when people are coming back after they've left for whatever reason, you know, financial um they wanted to try something new, they saw a different agency that was doing like $500 a month. Can't knock them for wanting to try it. I mean, it makes sense from a business standpoint if they can save money. We try mm -hmm. to do it all the time with different softwares. Um Yeah. You know, I kind of want to, since we were talking about product market fit in terms of 2023, um, I just wanted to quickly like break down what I find are like the three, the four basically fundamental pillars of uh, building uh, a seven figure agency, like a seven figure profit agency. Let's hit uh, it. Because the niche you choose and where you go and everything is going to, that's the vehicle you choose. And so I think going into it, if you're someone who's like, I want to build a, a real seven figure agency, mean seven figure income, then one, the industry you choose is so damn important. Like you have to choose the right industry. And when it comes to industry, really we're looking at like, what's the TAM? How many people are there? Like, what does all that look like? what what's the typical revenues in this type of industry what's the savviness what kind of budgets like you you got to understand that like so if you specialize from day one saying i'm going to figure out how to be the best attorney agency it's going to be hard as shit tons of competition but after five years of just just going so deep that's how you build your eight figure agency because attorneys will pay you fucking 10 20 30 40 50k a month how you know many yeah, so your industry chiropractors, but obviously more high end. How many chiropractors are there in the U.S. alone? I think for us in our viable sort of market, there's like five thousand, and then within medical clinics, there's like another. Yeah, I'd say like four to five thousand. So that's the thing in terms of competition. And what you need to look at is like, one, there's plenty to go around. Like if you think you can't get a single client that you can't get 10 clients in a specific niche because it's saturated, so to speak, usually the, the niches that are really good, they are saturated. There's tons of agencies in there. However, like saturation is, is whatever you can always, if you have a good product or service, you can always get oh, through yeah. that no one has all five thousand of the chiropractors right if they did i don't even know how much money they'd be making it'd be stupid yeah right no, so, yeah it comes down to like pick the right industry so important that's gonna you know 
it, give them some industries for 2023 that you see. I mean, for me, I like the competitive, highly saturated shit. Dentist. Because dentist. Uh, dentist. Roofing. Uh, all type of law, like attorneys, all that type of stuff. I'm going down the list on all those sub niches. Um, another big one who I know pays money uh, is all the dealerships, car dealerships, like yeah, that's a big one. retainer. The important thing is the reason why I like saturated niches is because when you pour all your time and energy and you know, the absolute foundation of it all is product market fit and building a super valuable service that you're super different, super strong and great feedback. Uh, you're just going to start to like, see, take all those clients in because at the end of the day, it's just good. Pro it's good product. So I'd rather yeah. build great product and a super competitive industry because 90% or more aren't focused on continuing to build a great product and continuing to innovate it. They're more focused on sales and shit. And so it's just over time, you're just going to out value, out produce, out corner them, word of mouth is going to spread and then you're going to get all those clients. So number one, industry. Number two, product market fit is the number one thing you're looking at. This is through solid feedback. This is through your churn. This is through your organic growth. And this is also through your customer success metrics. Like, what are you judged on? What do they care about? They care about appointments. They care about revenue. Um, what do those numbers look like? Like, what is your agency actually producing those numbers? And how are you going to continue to improve those numbers? Yep. 100%. So that's all the focal point right there is industry quick, that down. Quick definition of product market fit for anyone that doesn't know, like, let's say they're a little new to the game. What does that mean? I don't have the exact definition, but I'd say product market fit is when you have a service, right? For in our case, a service that's in an industry that is basically starting to get more demand than you have supply, right? Exactly. Or yep. demand is at least meeting supply, right? And your customer is saying, I enjoy the service. I like this. This is helping me. Or when they, when a, when a potential client sees your service, they're saying, wow, I want I that. that. Yeah. I want that. That's different. I have product market fit. That's what that is. So you Perfect. focus on that first. The second one is going to be now you need efficient acquisition channels, right? You need to be able to acquire new clients efficiently. Do you have, sorry, going back over, you have industry one, two product market fit number yep. three is going to be efficient acquisition channels being able to predictably get new clients at scale right because now you have something great now you need something to be able to efficiently bring these people in right through all your various different channels so once you have a great product and then you have all these people that want it what's the third one if it's just you and two other people yeah, and you, you have all these to. people wanting it. What do you, you have to build a team? Then you have to get good at recruiting, hiring, training, managing, growing, culture, vision, values, purpose, de developing a legit fucking squad, a team. That's when it gets hard. Yeah, that's, that's when it, this is when it gets tough. That's the hardest. That's that's the hardest part. You need people that are bought in on you, your ability to lead and your vision for the company. And you need to instill those beliefs into yeah. your team. That's the only way it's going to happen. You could have the smartest person in the world, but if they don't believe in what you're doing, they have no reason being on your team. I'd rather have someone that has yeah. less skills that truly believes and is like, you know, I want to work for you forever. Like I believe in what this company is doing. Let's fucking get after it. Rather than someone that comes in that's smart as shit and is just like, oh, it's just a paycheck, right? Yeah. Get that person out of your company right away. Or you, you have a smart person, but your training is, is ass. Yeah. They have no idea like where to prioritize most of their energy because there's no goals and KPIs. There's no consistent follow-up and training. There's no st strategic managing on departments and KPIs to meet the overall goals. Everything becomes very structured numerical data driven 
everyone's compensated on KPI. Um, and you create a growth culture is what we call it. Growth culture is like, and I take this from Judge Graham, but it's asking you the question, where's the client's money? Where's the company's money? And where's my money? We're always focused on growth in all three of those departments. And it's all through setting goals, setting KPIs. There's no emotions here. It's all data-driven and moving those numbers north. Yep. I have a cool KPI. So wait, you got to one, two, three. Is there a fourth one or is it just those three? Fourth was team. Fourth was team. So you have industry, product market fit, acquisition, distribution, ability to scale, and then building a team, which is knowing how to recruit, hire, train, manage, grow, vision, purpose, values, being able to really just uh, put a huge importance on culture. Who Who's your company? What do you, what's your guys' vibe? You know? Yeah. And let's, let's end this with some proof just for everyone watching. So I want to go over my bi- biggest success story and then you can mention one of yours. Okay. Um, one of the coolest pieces of feedback, I sent it to you after I got it. Cause I was just like, insanely amazed at like what we're able to do for a business. One of our clients in Ohio, some bed spa, I'm not going to mention his name, but I sent Stevie the video. I can even put the video clip in here when we edit it. If you want, we made them $1.4 million just off of the leads that we brought them in two years time working with us. So there's some pretty cool metrics in terms of retention. They've been with us for two years and they made 1.4 million just off the leads that we brought them, which is just insane, right? Yeah, that's... It's one of the craziest testimonials I've ever seen. Yeah, that's absolutely massive. Um, Shoot, for us, um, when that comes right to the top of my head is when one of our bigger sort of partnerships, um, we were going through this issue of like... um, some of the clients complaining, et cetera, et cetera. And through that, we went in this huge, massive deep dive on what the KPIs look like, what the RIs were, what the return on investments were and revenue and all that. And at the end of the day, what we realized is that this type of clientele and the people who were working to both help, we were averaging, it was a 330% um, return on investment average throughout this client that thought like the whole world was falling down. You know, I was like, what do you, we just had a, they were emotional and that's what really started us to go super deep into all the data. And then once we presented the data, they were like, holy shit. And then their entire organization changed. This is a big company. This is a big company. This is like 50 employee company. This is not small, huge company and they looked at it and they were like we are so sorry like our whole account management model is broken and people are reacting off emotions and what he and she says and what the client feels and we're not data driven and we literally through that three week four week just intense deep dive not only saved everyone and got everyone to where they need to be mentally, but their entire organization and the, the, the entire client success department and account management totally leveled up how they do things now. And we were obviously, you know, thanked for that very well. And a lot of people came back on and it was all like, he chased. She, so that was, that was a big one. I was like, that's that huge. Up of the mind, that's yeah. huge. And like that comes down to one transparency But number two is like knowing your numbers. If you don't provide your clients with an accurate way to establish how much money you're making for them, then what you're doing is no value whatsoever. So like think about hiring, let's just say an SEO company that ranks companies on Google. If you can't show them that they're actually ranking in the top and they can't actually search it themselves, they're going to leave you, right? If I can't show my clients that we actually made them $10,000 in the first month, like what are you, what are you doing? Like, you don't want to come to them with any metrics, like whatsoever. You need to be meeting with them every two weeks, every week going over this person bought what, and this is an account manager role, but Hey, we had these people come in. What did they buy? How much did they buy for it? Let's update the numbers together. Great. We're looking at this point. 
we know exactly where we are on return on investment. Huge. It's huge. That and communication. Um, and you have, yeah, taking the step further, knowing those numbers and when you do that, and let's just say you're, you have strategic partnerships and you're doing this, this, and that. Those numbers also need to be CC'd to other parties who are also heavily invested in this business. Oh, in this I like business. that. Yeah. Because that's where the he say, she say, all this stuff is there. And then you just spread the facts everywhere. <laughs> spread the facts everywhere since everyone's interests are on all these clients and where they're headed. And so that I'm going to I'm gonna do that. That's a, that's a good point because I work with a big med spa chain and uh, there's two other agency partners. We have a bulk of them. Um, the, only, the other agency partners are pretty new. They have like one or two clients. Um, but I'm going to start CCing the owner and everyone. Always, all see, always CC owners, execs, account management, all these people who are just as invested as you. You can't rely on client to tell coach these are the numbers no most of them a lot of people go off of emotion you don't you know a lot of people are emotional and so just i don't know that's you know that's future step for most people but just yeah yeah and then I, i'd like to add to a point if if ever there is something in question with the client whether it's results whether it's their front desk if you're doing doing standard lead generation whatever it is address the issue and be proactive and come up with a solution so for example i i had a sales problem with one of my big clients they're just having a hard time selling and i tried to figure out what the problem actually was so i dove deep on like two weeks in a row where we met like a couple of times a week every day with their actual internal team who was selling who was doing the lead follow-up who was getting the booked appointments because we don't do full done for you system for every client, right? Some clients have the staff to actually do everything. Mm -hmm. So I found out through trial and error, right? And diving in deep, what the issues were, we addressed them, did some training on it and completely turned around the business just by being proactive and saying, well, figure it out yourself. No, like they're paying us money. Let's help them with the issue that they have. And they're going to thank us for it forever, you know? Yeah. And that's how you can overall just increase your offering through consistent pain points when you realize, oh shoot, is this where we, this is a big enough problem to where we need to now as a team build a product or a service to now address this, which then provides more value, right? Which can increase your price point, which then overall increases churn, right? In a sales aspect, right? Like, so that's just being, it's, it's innovating and, uh, and adding on to service delivery when it's becoming more of an occurrence and it's more of a demand. Right. Well, Stevie, do you have anything else that you want to, uh, that you want to push forth? I know we're kind of up on time here. Yeah. So I think overall, um, um, yeah, leave any sort of questions in the comments, things like that. Uh, we might be doing this maybe once or twice a month, who knows, but put in the comments, what topics you'd want us to talk about, um, any feedback or anything you took away from this. Obviously, Hayden runs a multi six-figure agency that's profit, real take-home. You know, I run a multi mid-seven-figure agency with, you know, multi seven-figure profit. So we have a range here, right? We've all been through this game. We're years in this game. Most people on YouTube are nowhere even close to what we're talking about or have the the proof to back it within team numbers, everything. And so I, if you guys have any questions, um, drop them down below. Maybe we can cover them on a next sort of podcast. This is a podcast. If this is a podcast. Yeah. I think we have to put this on other platforms for it to be a podcast. Yeah. A YouTube zoom, but yeah. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Like Stevie said, leave some comments below. Let us know what you, what you want us to chat about next time. And, uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Peace. Look at you eating berries, dude. Uh.